Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a new and epic pro revenge story. A sysadmin pissed me off. I just wanted to get him fired. A Sparky's Tale. Let's jump right in. Hit that subscribe button and I'll belly flop into this bathtub full of hand sanitizer. Over the years, my job has been pretty diverse. I enjoy all the master electrician and instrumentation work, but building and maintaining networks has been a joy as well. There are so many pretty blinking lights. All the testing and commissioning tools are fun to play with as well. There are also lasers. One thing that never gets old is seeing people's faces who don't know me that well when I rock up in high-vis clothing to start messing around in network cables. Here I am, a slightly scruffy looking older guy, glue and resin on work boots, knocking about in IT. It's pretty funny and handy sometimes. Glue and I haven't been on good terms since kindy, I don't know why. As an apprentice, I managed to get half a bottle of blue conduit glue in my hair for f**k's sake. Tom was a junior government system administrator working at a regional IT department. When the position of IT manager became available at a 2,000 student government high school, Tom was encouraged, finessed, manipulated, conned to apply. See, Tom was a head as a wanker of the first order, in the four months that he'd been there after transferring in, Tom had pissed off the whole government IT team. You know that person who has to comment on everything, thinks they know everything, thinks they are always the smartest in a room, but is actually only about 67% competent and a bit lazy? This was Tom. The principal was so glad to have a government sysadmin apply for the role, that they changed the job title from supervisor to manager to entice him. The role had an office and two support staff. It was also arranged that Tom would be given more control over the school network than previous supervisors. I heard later that his then government IT director may have suggested the title enhancement to the principal as part of the finesse. Tom had his own fiefdom. It also didn't take him long to piss the principal off either as well as the admin staff and most of the teachers. I'd done work with government IT for some time before Tom showed up and knew everyone, though only gotten to know him peripherally. He had yet to rub me the wrong way. We had two biggest jobs at the high school about a year after Tom started there. Change out a ton of key door locks for a brand new, standalone, network door access system we would install and maintain and change out existing room lighting for energy efficient LED panels. These two jobs would each be done during a two week term break, either side of a 10 week school term. I would get to run both jobs. In the planning phase of the door access network, Tom made it known that he would be trained on the new door system and be in charge of it, since it was a network in his school. The principal made it known whose school it was, and that Tom would stay right the f away from it since it was standalone and had nothing to do with him. Tom was not happy about this. One Tuesday, a little over five weeks since the door system had been live, I was driving to a job when I got the phone call that kicked off this tale. High school called, they're having trouble with the new door system. Turning the car around, I wasn't sure what annoyed me more, that my sing-along with Blink-182 had just been interrupted, or that I would now miss out on scones fresh from the oven. At the system operator terminal PC in an admin office, I hear that there were two issues. Some teachers couldn't open some doors this morning, and some other doors that the admin staff tried to change functions on weren't responding. I suspected the regular user teething issues. We were five weeks into the 10 week term at this stage. They went on to explain that they'd looked and found the teacher's door access had been changed to remove some doors. They'd re-added the doors and fixed that, but the doors they were trying to change functions on weren't responding. Looking in the system on their user login, they were right. They'd re-added these doors correctly for these teachers, but why wasn't the system updating the door changes? Logging in as the admin, I see that apart from the hub in this office, the other 18 network hubs are not responding. Hmm, weird. Unlocking the cabinet, I see that the fiber optic patch lead, which connects to the other hubs, is dangling in space. Very weird. These take some doing to unplug. They don't just fall out. Reconnecting the patch lead and rechecking the network, I see the other hubs are responding, so I push the door changes through. 
There are still questions though, so I open the system log. I see that the changes to the teacher's access was made by one of the admin users at 5.33 p.m., and the hubs went offline soon after. Strange, because the admin staff finished at 4.30 p.m. The log also showed that someone who is not admin staff entered this office at 5.08 p.m., Tom. I sat there and thought about asking the admin staff some questions, but decided against it. I suspected that Tom had insinuated himself here over the past couple of weeks to get the gist of how the door program worked, and had gotten a user login to boot. If I kicked up a fuss, he might be able to IT doublespeak the teacher changes. Also, the patch lead being out could be waved away as incompetence on my part. As I was thinking, the admin staff said that Tom had been in earlier and had overheard the issues they were having. He'd said something to the effect of, that's what you get when you let electricians manage a network. Oh, okay, he was being pissy about being banned from this system. My crystal ball went through a variety of scenarios, and I decided to let sleeping dogs lie, for now. Three days later, on the Friday, I got another call about the high school's door system. Checking in and checking it out, I found that the issues they had were almost identical to the first, except that only four hubs were offline. After going to one of the affected hubs and plugging the patch lead back in, I opened the system log again to find it empty. What the flying f***? The daily backup file had been deleted as well. Only my admin login could do these things, and how the f*** did he get that? Checking that the secondary backup on an external drive was still intact, I dumped that into my laptop and had a swivel on the chair for a few minutes. Yep, this backup showed that the admin login had been used to do the teacher's changes this time and delete the system log, after all the admin staff had left yesterday. This operator console PC had been provided by Tom. It was one of the school assets. The government image was supposed to have been wiped and a clean operating system put on, so it couldn't be connected to the government networks. Maybe Tom had a keylogger in there somewhere. I gave it a good sparky go, but couldn't find anything. I even checked for cameras. After changing the admin password, I left and put on some Nick Cave in the car. That evening, while Mr. Cave and Daniels kept me company, I looked up keyloggers, and then went through my boxes of spare parts toys. It was secret squirrel time. On Monday, I timed my arrival to the school just as the admin staff were leaving. I just wanted to check some things on the system. They left and left me to it. I placed one small camera under the desk to see the back of the PC tower, one on a shelf looking at the screen and one on top of a corner cupboard to see the room. Happy with my work, I went home. That Thursday, same thing again. Different teachers affected and different hubs offline, but the same thing. Admin login used to wipe the logs and backup I changed the admin password again for reasons. After coming back that afternoon to retrieve the footage from the cameras, I figured out what he was doing. The first time, he used the user login to make changes, pulled the patch lead, then installed a keylogger device on the keyboard USB cable into the tower. It looked like a little black USB adapter thingy. He used this to get my admin login to wipe the system log and delete the backup so there'd be no evidence of his card accessing the room. What he was doing was a f***ing stupid way to go about it. His ego must be a thing of wonder. The contempt he must have held for my abilities as just a sparky to figure things out, even without the cameras, was boggling. I maintain systems and networks far more complex than this, like the school security system, for example, or a similar door access system in a much, much more secure facility, Okay, f***er, game on. Over the next four weeks, Tom and I went through these dance steps four more times. I heard all about him suggesting that if he ran the system, a professional sysadmin, there wouldn't be issues like these. I didn't mention to anyone about the logs or backups, I just kept collecting my video and secondary backups. Because, through my association with government IT, I'd learned a few things about their policies, and wanted to f*** with Tom and maybe collect some more ammunition before I absolutely f***ing wrecked him. Purposefully using keyloggers on a government asset is a big no-no. The next two-week term break was here, and we began changing out light fittings. It was easy work, 
and I had a team of eight. Once I kicked them off, I went to work. I added a relay card to each of six specially selected security system expansion points in six different buildings. These buildings were where the people worked who disliked Tom the most. I'd worked at the school long enough to know all about it. Relays are wonderful. Give me enough relays, timers, and contactors, and I can make your wildest electrical and control dreams come true. A relay is a switch, that's all like a light switch that you can turn on or off without being there. Here's a thing about data cables that not a lot of people know. Data cables connect the data socket in an office to a patch panel in a network rack. There are eight wires inside, but they each have very specific jobs. Four are commonly used to carry data traffic. Two or one pair for upload, two for download. Another pair for power to a PoE device like a wireless access point. Say you figured out a way to get one specific pair of these eight wires into, let's say, a relay. You could then maybe interrupt the upload wires or download wires or power wires. Any of these would cause issues for your computer's ability to communicate. If you could turn the relays on and off at opportune times for selected people, perhaps via a security system you had remote access to, you could maybe introduce weird intermittent faults in a network. If you could do this without it looking like the cables in a network cabinet patch panel had been touched, you might now have a method to cause grief without it being traceable through IT magic. Sure, a competent IT person would assume the cable was damaged and go test it. But what if when you went to test, it was all okay? It would maybe look like a network system issue that a competent sysadmin should be able to diagnose and fix. A critical part of all this would be if you had a job, as an electrician, to make alterations to a building's lighting, you could then turn some power circuits off so that the network cabinet in a building was unpowered for a while. You could then take data cables out of patch panels without it being noticed by a sysadmin. You could run a new length of data cable and terminate it into the patch panel and make a nice coupled join of the two cables in the ceiling, then split off some pairs to relays. This could be done over two days. You could then begin switching the principal's relay on the third day of the two-week student break. It would be pretty easy keeping track of Tom's whereabouts so you could make the cable appear okay for testing. Once the principal was good and pissed off at Tom for not being able to fix their issues, you could start switching the admin manager's relay. The next day, you could go to work on the head of English in another building, then the head of science in another. Having Tom out of his office and you having a legitimate reason to be in their lighting job would mean you could have a real good look around and find the USB logger. Standing in Tom's office, I took a picture of the key logger among the mess on his desk. It might have been hidden in a drawer before that. Then I called my mate, Tom's old boss, the regional director of government IT. I told him about the issues I'd had with the door access system, the videos, the key logger. He came down, took his own picture, and called the principal. On my laptop in the principal's office, I showed them the videos of Tom's vandalism on the door system. The director examined the keylogger. It was so much worse than I thought. They found not only my system info on it, but info from the school accounting department, director's department, and more. Tom had so much incriminating evidence on it from all kinds of government departments that he was bend over no lube f***ed. When Tom answered the summons to the principal's office, I couldn't help smiling at him. I know that's mean, but I'm only human sometimes. He had no answers to the questions. He tried to claim the keylogger wasn't his. The director shot that down. It had too much stuff from places Tom had access to. It couldn't be anyone else's. Then I showed him the videos. That look he gave me was priceless. He'd figured out I'd done this to him, and it was glorious. A simple electrician. Go f*** yourself, Tom. He wasn't prosecuted, because that would have caused too much of a public stink, but Tom got flagged and would never be able to work in any government job anywhere in the country. Not as a janitor, or as a contractor doing government work. And since graduating uni, he'd only ever worked in government. Sorry, private industry, he's all yours now. I did say something stupid, though. After Tom left Principal's office that reveal day, Principal asked Director if they could send someone competent 
to look at the school's network issues. Without thinking, I said, nah, I'll fix that. I blame having too much fun. After they had me explain what I'd done, because I needed Tom out of his office, I had to cross my heart promise not to do it again. Principal didn't fully understand what I'd done, but director said I was like some evil MacGyver. I put the network cabling back in place and took all my toys home. Thank you for reading. Again, f*** you Tom. Glossary. Kindy. Kindergarten. Where you learn as a small child not to run with scissors. Also, where a lifelong acrimonious relationship is formed with glue. Not clay glue though, that was tasty. Scone. A delicious flour-based baked treat. Grandma scones are the best, with cream and raspberry jam. The scones you try and make yourself are excellent hockey pucks. Secret Squirrel. A cartoon I liked when I was a kid. A squirrel secret agent who has a mole mate. They have gadgets and adventures. Nick Cave. Australian Renaissance man. Nick Cave is mostly known as a singer-songwriter. Excellent revenge planning music. Relay Logic was used to run elevators before there were computers, so many things have relays, like electromechanical wonders. I love them. Okay, so a relay has a coil in it that you energize. This creates a tiny electromagnet and pulls a piece of ferrous metal down. This changes the state of the contacts. Easy, huh? Just like a light switch, but without the need of fingers. OP did a wonderful job of destroying a rogue system admin. But the best part of it for me was the glossary at the end, especially the part about the scones. I want to thank OP for posting their story to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.